And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. And since we last spoke, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord. And so throughout this Easter octave, let us all remember that he is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And this week on the campaign trail, there were some interesting times for me. I began Monday with G.T. Thompson, Congressman Thompson, the dean of our Republican congressional delegation in Washington, who is not only my honorary chairman, but somebody who has now publicly and officially endorsed my candidacy. And Congressman Thompson and I spent three days going across the northern tier of Pennsylvania, beginning in Kane, Pennsylvania, in McKean County, where it was snowing like the Dickens, coming in from the side, three or four inches accumulated before we left, and there was more coming down as we hit the highway to head home. But we had some great days up there, meeting some folks we hadn't seen before, and getting a lot of support in rural Pennsylvania, because I'm still the candidate from the heartland. And another debate this week, this time with only a few of the candidates because some of the folks that signed that silly, I don't even know what you'd call it, pledge to only participate in debates under which certain conditions were met, you know, they have uh, participated in some other debates where those conditions weren't met. So they've kind of picked and chosen. But what it ultimately says is they're afraid to debate. I'm not. I will be at any event where I'm invited to speak with other candidates to discuss the issues that face the people of Pennsylvania. I think it's so incredibly important that people have a chance to hear the candidates, see them up close and personal, get an unvarnished, unfinished, unscripted view of the candidates where they're not reading off a piece of paper or off of a teleprompter some words that somebody else wrote for them so that they can really get a sense of what the candidates are, what their vision for Pennsylvania is, and whether or not they are worthy of their support. I'm happy to lay my record. I'm happy to lay my views. I'm happy to lay my history on the table for anybody to scrutinize <clears throat> and decide whether or not they want to join our team. I'd be honored to have the support and the vote of Republicans in the primary on May 17th, and I ask all of them to take a close look. And in that debate this week, you again saw the candidates and their abilities. And you know, I've been really, really honored to have folks come to me consistently and constantly and say, Charlie, you're the candidate that looks like a governor, sounds like a governor, acts like a governor, and clearly has the knowledge to be a good governor who can actually govern, who knows what needs to be done and knows how to do it. <clears throat> Next week, there's gonna be another debate. And I probably, I'm not going to be involved. Not because I chose not to, but because apparently I'm not going to be invited, as are half, actually more than half, of the candidates running in the Republican primary because a Texas corporation has decided that we have to have certain criteria met before they'll invite us to debate. So think about that. A Texas corporation is going to deny the president pro tem of the state senate, a former member of Congress, myself, a sitting county commissioner in one of the largest counties in Pennsylvania, the opportunity to present our views before the people of Pennsylvania and deny Republican primary voters the opportunity to hear us. So we'll figure out some ways to go around that so that we can take our message directly to every Republican voter in Pennsylvania because it's so critically important as we come down to the wire that people have an opportunity to make a truly informed choice about who our next governor is going to be. And I continue to fight for a turn around and turn away from the lockdowns, the mandates, the arbitrary and capricious actions of Tom Wolf and Josh Shapiro and talk about individual liberty, personal freedom, hope, growth, and opportunity for Pennsylvania. Finally, this week, Jay Wright, the best coach in college basketball, announced his retirement at Villanova University. What a glorious career he has had there, and in many respects he did it exactly right, going out at the zenith of his career. Jay Wright was not only the best game day coach, but he was also a shaper and molder of young men and made them into really terrific athletes, but more important, help them become really terrific human beings. He is gonna be sorely missed in the coaching profession because he is the best, and think about it. The last six Final Fours, he was there three times with two national championships. It's tough to beat that, and it's tough to even imagine Villanova basketball without Jay Wright, but Kyle Neptune steps in, and I know he'll do a great job. Formerly a protege of Jay Wright, 
coached at Fordham for a couple of years. He comes back to the Villanova campus, so the 2022-23 season will be another great one. But for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week. <laughs>